Hi, this is John Whitaker for the Graduate Level Probability class, and this is our 22nd video lecture, and today we want to continue working about conditional probabilities, but in this case we're going to start looking at conditional probabilities involving an event, just generically an event, not necessarily a random variable. We'll look at the random variables as well, given another uh, random variable. Uh, so, let us go ahead and get started. We're going to prove some facts all in this type of situation. Uh, and what we're going to learn about, really, is that if we use the conditional probability with the right given, it can help us compute a probability itself. Okay? So here, uh, we're going to be computing uh, probabilities by condition. And so uh, we're going to start off with the definition of indicator variable is what we're defining. And it says, let B sub 1 be an event. Then the indicator function or random variable, we we'll call it random variable. is the random variable x sub e, so 1, uh, defined by x sub e sub 1 is equal to 1 if e sub 1 occurs, and 0 if uh, e sub 1 does not occur. So x sub e sub 1 is the indicator that e1 occurred or did, either 1 or 0. Okay, let's look at some facts that are kind of preliminary facts that will get us to our main two facts. The expected value of x sub e sub 1 is equal to the probability of e sub 1. Uh, let us look at that. So here, the way that we'll prove it is to look at the expected value of the indicator of random variable b sub 1. Now, the indicator random variable b sub 1 uh, is a discrete random variable. So this is going to be the sum of the x sub e sub 1s, uh, and they run from 0 to 1, of x sub e sub 1, and then here it would be... Uh, f sub x sub e sub 1 of x sub e sub 1. So, um, this is equal to 0 uh, times f x sub e sub 1 of 0 plus 1 times f of x sub e sub 1 of 1. Okay, this is equal to um, 1 times L sub x sub e sub 1, so this is the PMF of x sub e sub 1, of 1, just F of x sub e sub 1 of 1. What is this? This is the probability that x sub e sub 1 equals to 1. What's that? That's the probability that e sub 1 occurred. And so that's the probability of e sub 1. That's what we're going to so that proves this fact. We had seen this type of logic when we did Markov's inequality. So I used that indicator function uh, i for a certain event in Markov's inequality. You might remember that.
Okay. Um, here's another fact. Still a little bit of a preliminary fact. It says the conditional expectation of x and e sub 1 given y equal to y okay, is equal to the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y. So we think of this as a conditional probability, and we're thinking of e sub 1 as an event. Okay? So this part right here can be kind of tough to uh, figure out what we mean, but it's not maybe so tough if we're conditioning along the right random variable y. Okay? But we're going to say that it's a fact. And then uh, I'm going to make this comment, so uh, I'm going to prove it. And so uh, I won't tell you, though, although I'm going to prove it in a sense. So let me make a comment. So although this fact is true, when y is a continuous random variable, This, uh, the proof of this fact for y being continuous is beyond the scope of this course. It's too hard for us. Okay, but I will prove it when y is a um, discrete random variable. So, proof when y is discrete. So, what we're going to start off with is that we're going to note that the expected value of x sub e sub 1 uh, given y equal to uh, uh, y, where x sub e sub 1 is equal to, we just said 1 if e occurs, and 0 if not e, is equal to, okay, so this will be uh, the sum over the x sub e sub 1 values, which is one, uh, 0 to 1, x sub e sub 1, I'm sorry, this would be sum over y values. And I said y, but that's not right. It's, it's a. That's correct. It's a t, t sub 1 running from 0 to 1. I made a mistake. Uh, uh, here, x sub e sub 1, and then it would be times the PMF of y. That's what we have. That's what the conditional expectations define. Okay, <clears throat> okay so uh, that is equal to. Well, when x sub e sub 1 is 0, we just get 0, so it's only when x sub e sub 1 is 1 that we have something. So this is 1 times f sub y of y. And this, of course, is not correct either. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. So this is a conditional expectation. How is it defined? Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the sum with y being discrete of the first random variable's uh, uh, values times the conditional PMF. I don't know what I was doing. Okay. X given, uh, or X sub e sub 1 given Y. Okay, there we go. And so here, this is F of X sub e sub 1. This will be, uh, we know this is 1 uh, given Y. This is the probability of uh, x sub e sub 1 equal to 1 um, 
given y equal to um, y. And of course, x sub e sub 1 uh, equaling 1 is nothing more than e sub 1 occurring. So that's what we were trying to prove. That proves it. Okay, that's the go-between fact to get us to our main results for today. Okay, so here's the, the main result for today. It's got two parts, if you will. Here's what it says. Okay, so part A of it, it says the probability of e sub 1. Is that equal to? Um, that's equal to the sum over all y values of the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y times the probability of y equals to y. And that's what it is where this is if y is, uh, where y is discrete. In part B, it says the probability of some event e sub 1 is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y times f sub y of y of dy, where y is a continuous range variable. The more we're thinking of these facts being useful is that they might be useful for calculating the probability of an event where you do some kind of conditioning on something uh, that affects that event happening. So this might be the probability of e sub 1 given y might be easy to calculate provided you pick the, y, the right y to condition on. Okay, let's look at the proofs of this. Okay, well, uh, the probability of e to 1 is equal to the expected value of x of e to 1, this indicated random variable, and that's equal to the conditional expected, uh, I'm sorry, the expected value of the conditional expected value of uh, x of e to 1 given uh, y equal to y. So this is by a previous fact we had, random variables. And then what we just proved was the, expect, the, the initial expected value of x of e sub 1 given y. And that can be represented by the probability that of e sub 1 given y is equal to y, so it's conditional probability. Okay. So that's what we are. Now, Looking at each case, so part A, if y is a discrete random variable, okay, so <clears throat> the probability of e sub 1, which equals to the expected value of the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y. This probability, this conditional probability, we think of it as a random variable uh, that's a function of y. So that would be equal to, with it being a discrete random variable, be a sum over all y values 
of the probability of each of one given y equal to little y times f sub y of y. <clears throat> and that is equal to the sum over all y values for the probability of e sub 1 given y uh, times the probability that big y is equal to y because that's what the PMF means. So that's proved part A. Before I move on, uh, I want to go back to the statement here for a sec. So I've just proved part A. Um, <clears throat> These statements are, in some sense, like the total law of probability. That's what we have here. Okay, I'm going to do part B. So for part B, One is a continuous answer. We've already shown that the probability of e sub 1 is equal to the expected value of the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y. Again, this probability. Uh, the conditional probability of e sub 1 given y to y, we're thinking of that as a random variable that's a function of y. And so uh, here, with y being a continuous random variable, this expected value is nothing more than an interval from minus infinity to infinity of that function of y, so that the probability of e sub 1 given y equal to y, times f sub y of y dy. That's what it's defined to be. And so that proves part B. So that proves the facts. Let's look at an example. So this is a technical example. So here's what it says. It says, suppose x and y are independent continuous random variables. Um, having densities <clears throat> f sub x of x and f sub y of y. So compute the probability of x is uh, less than y. So I'm compute, computing the probability of an event. So here's my solution. probability that x is less than y, so I know that, uh, well, first of all, I'm on conditions. I'm going to say this is a probability um, I'm going to use, I'm sorry, this is an event. I'm going to use the fact that I just had part B because y is a, uh, a continuous random variable, and I'm going to compute uh, using uh, y being given, y for y being given. So here's what I'm thinking. This is equal to uh, minus infinity to infinity. Uh, the probability that uh, x is less than y, that event, given y equal to y times f sub y of y dy. That's what part d of our fact gave us. Okay, <clears throat> so here I know that y is equal to y. So this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of uh, the probability that x is less than little y, given y is equal to y, okay. times f sub y of y. 
dy. And uh, due to independence between x and y, then this conditional probability is nothing more than the probability of x is less than little y times f sub y of little y dy. Now, because we're talking about continuous random variables, the probability that x is less than y is the same thing as probability that x is less than or equal to y. So this is minus infinity to infinity times probability or of the probability of x being less than or equal to y times f sub y of y, the PDF of y, dy. Now that guy right there is nothing more than the CDF of x evaluated at y. So we're really getting some kind of technical, theoretical answer here, representation for the answer. So that's equal to um, the integral from minus infinity to infinity. This would be L of X of Y, L sub Y of Y, dy, where f sub x sub y is equal to the integral from minus infinity up to y of, uh, here, this will be f sub x sub x dx, okay, the cdf of x. Okay, and that's the answer. So that ends this problem. Another example where we can use those facts. Um, this is a more concrete example, even though it's still going to be uh, a little bit theoretical or abstract. Here's what it says. It says, an insurance company, a long window, supposes that the number of accidents that each of its policyholders uh, will have in a year is a Poisson so it's Poisson uh, distributed or is Poisson so he is Poisson distributed can't take away that Um, so remember what that means. So it says that the PML, f of x, f of x, <clears throat> so if, if x is Poisson, f of x equals the e to the minus lambda, lambda of x over x factorial. Remember that was PML. And of course, x ran from 0, 1, 2, Okay, um, with the mean of the Poisson, depending on the policy hole. Okay, so here, what were we saying? We're saying we've got insurance companies. And the chance that a particular person, uh, or the number of the accidents that a particular person will have, is Poisson distributed. 
But the lambda involved will depend on what person uh, you're picking. Okay? So <clears throat> if the Poisson mean, that's our lambda, of a randomly chosen Policy holder is a gamma is gamma distributed. Wow, that's amazing here. Um, with density function. So G of lambda, okay, there's a chance that this is our lambda, um, is equal to lambda times E to the minus lambda, where lambda is greater than or equal to zero. So here, just to remind you, okay, uh, the distribution of a gamma random variable x Is, so here's what it looks like. It's m of x, and it's equal to lambda times e to the minus lambda x times lambda x to the alpha minus 1 over gamma of alpha. That's what it was. So when you look at g of lambda, given to us in the problem, as lambda e to the minus lambda, to match this form, okay, so the lambda is like our uh, x here, okay? Okay. Uh, so that particular g, uh, g of lambda is a gamma is a gamma distributed So we're talking about the lambda, if you will. Gamma, gamma distributed, random variable, From that, lambda, gamma distributed random variable with parameters uh, this uh, uh, lambda equal to 1 and alpha uh, equal to, uh, I think it's 2. Right. So here, if you let this lambda be equal to 1. Okay? So this 1 is e to the minus x. So x is like this lambda over here. <clears throat> so 1, and then uh, here, this, uh, uh, we have x, that's our lambda, that's this guy here, raised to the 2 minus 1, that's just 1. And then gamma of 2, okay, gamma of 2, that was n minus 1. Remember, gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial. So gamma of 2 is 1 factorial, which is just 1, so you divide by 1. So that's how this matches. I haven't written up the question yet. So our question is, what 
is the probability that a randomly chosen policyholder has exactly in accidents next year. So here's the solution. We let x equals the number of accidents next year. Okay, we're going to let y equal to b be plus sum uh, mean, that's our lambda, mean number of accidents. For this policy holder, Then conditionally on y, so the probability uh, <clears throat> that x equals to n, so then we want to know what's the chance that we have exactly n x. The probability that x equals n is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity. I'm using the integral because y, what we're conditioning on, is a continuous random variable. The probability that x equals to m and y equals to lambda, okay, times, and then this would be g of sub or f sub y, if you will, but that's nothing more than g of lambda. In this case, where we had g of lambda, lambda times e to minus lambda is what we have. D would be lambda. So is the variable, variable. Okay. So this is equal to because of uh, g of lambda running from zero to infinity. The integral runs from zero to infinity because otherwise g of lambda is zero. And then this would be uh, um, e to the minus lambda. So. Um, here, we know that y is equal to lambda, that specific lambda, okay? It means generic, but that specific generic one. And given that, what's the probability that that particular person whose uh, parameter is lambda here, the mean for the Poisson random variable, has n axis? So that's e to the minus lambda, so I'm thinking about the Poisson. So lambda to the n over n factorial, that's what this part would be. g of lambda is lambda e to the minus lambda, d lambda. Okay. Well, if you want, I can do just a little bit here before I leave. This is 1 over 
n factorial, integral from 0 to infinity, of e to the minus 2 lambda, uh, lambda to the n plus 1, d lambda. Okay, well, we need to calculate that integral there at the bottom, and to do that, we need to recognize that it's similar to a specific type of integral. So let's, let's work on that. So here's what we do. Now consider a gamma distributed Random variable, lambda, big lambda. Okay. With parameters okay. alpha equal to n plus 2 and lambda equal to 2. Then, the PDF of lambda is F sub lambda okay, of lambda. Okay, what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to, um, so this was, uh, it would be 2 times e to the minus 2 lambda, 2 to the lambda, uh, raised to the alpha minus 1, that would be m plus 1, all over gamma of alpha, which is m plus 2, which equals 2. So it would be 2 to the n plus 2, so this 2 and this 2, so it breaks the n plus 1. So 2 to the n plus 2, um, lambda, well, to the n plus 1, and e to the minus 2 lambda, all over, here this would be n plus 1 factorial. And again, lambda is greater than or equal to zero. So that's its that's the form for its probability density function. So if I integrate, I get one. So let's do that. So 1 is equal to the minus infinity to infinity of L, the PM, at PDF of, of lambda, lambda E lambda. And what's that equal to? That's the integral from 0 to 1, 0 to, one, zero to infinity, of 2 to the n plus 2, lambda to the n plus 1, E to the minus 2 lambda, all over n plus 1, factorial d lambda. Okay, we can pull certain things out. So that's equal to uh, the 2 to the n plus 2. Doesn't have anything to do with lambda, so I can pull that out. And then the n plus 1 factorial, we pull it out. And we're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of lambda, well, I'll write it down this way. E to the minus 2 lambda, uh, lambda to the n plus 1, d lambda. Well, that's the form of what, of what we had in our solution. So this says, the integral from 0 over 1 of e to the minus 2 lambda, lambda to the n plus 1, d lambda is equal to well, uh, so if I solve for this part, 
I'd have to get rid of this. Remember, that's, this whole thing is equal to 1. So I'd multiply by n plus 1 factorial over 2 to the n plus 1. So this is what this is equal to. When I multiply 1 by that, I get n plus 1 factorial over 2 to the n plus 2. All right. And that gives us our answer. So the probability that x is equal to n, which we computed, was just this integral. And here's that integral. That's equal to n plus 1 factorial over 2 to the n plus 2. That's the answer. Okay, I want to look at one more example, look at the solutions, and then notice some characteristics about the solutions. And then that's it for this lecture. Here's an example. It says, suppose that the number of people who visit a yoga studio each day is a Poisson random variable with mean lambda. Okay. Suppose further that each person who visits is uh, independently a female with probability P. So it doesn't matter what the, uh, what the previous person came in as, female or male. The next person, their chance of being female, probability P. Or male with probability. One minus P. Find the joint probability that exactly M women and M men. Visit the yoga shop today. So what we have is information about big N and information about the uh, probability of a woman or a man coming in. So <clears throat> here's what we're being asked to find. So is the joint PMF, PMF, because these are Poisson, uh, random variable maybe. So here, we're, well, here, let's, let's do it this way. Probability, of, well, we need to set up some error. So if we're going to let n sub 1 equal to the number of women in the kingdom. That's that. Visited that day. Let n sub 2 
be the number of men. Institutes the number of men that visit that day. And then we're going to let um, n equal to uh, the number of visitors. Total number of visitors, both men and women. Okay? Okay. So, so n is equal to n sub 1 plus n sub 2. So, conditional on n. Okay, so what do we condition? First of all, here's what we want the probability that n. So 1 equals to, so that's the number of women, so that's equal to uh, m, and n sub 2 equal to, so number of women is supposed to be n, exactly, n women, and number, the number of men is m, okay, this ought to be equal to, now we're going to condition on big n, that's a discrete random variable because that's Poisson distributed, so this is going to be a sum, over all the output values for um, n, big n, so I'm going to say uh, that could be zero to infinity, of uh, the probability of n, you know what, I need more room. This is equal to a sum, as I run from zero to infinity, of the probability that n sub 1 is equal to n, and n sub 2 is equal to m, Given n equal to i times, well, it would be f sub n of i, so I'm just going to write that down as probability that n is equal to i. It's a discrete math variable. <clears throat> and then, so that's what we're, what we're looking at. And um, let's make a comment about this. So my comment, before I leave it, my comment is this. Um, here, for all the i's that we could have, the only one time when prob that the probability of this conditional probability, this conditional probability would be non-zero, is when i is equal to n plus n. It's the only time. So all of the terms in the sum are zero except for one of them when i is equal to n plus n. And that's what I'm going to write next. So I guess, let me write up some. Let me write up a statement. So no. The probability of n sub 1 equals to n and n sub 2 equals to m given n equals to i. That equals to 0 when i is different than n plus m. Okay? So, the thing that we're trying to find out, the probability that n sub 1 is equal to n and uh, n sub 2 is equal to m, okay? That's that sum, but that sum really only has one non-zero term in it, and that's the probability that n sub 1 is equal to n and n sub 2 is equal to m, given n equals to n plus m times the probability, right now room, that n equals to n plus m. Just that one term. So let's see, what's that? <clears throat> this is equal to the probability that n sub 1 is equal to n, 
n sub 2 is equal to m uh, given n is equal to m plus m. Yeah. Times, now the probability that big n is equal to m plus m, big n was uh, Poisson distributed. Okay. So this is going to be uh, lambda. Um, so it's e to the minus lambda, that's what it should say. Lambda to the n plus m over n plus m factorial. Okay, so the work that we need to do next, so this multiplication, the work we need to do next is to figure out this conditional probability. But what we, what we can think of this conditional probability here, though, at is that we know we have n plus m people that come into the yoga shop. Okay? And the question is, uh, out of those n plus m people, what's the probability, we know that, given that, what's the probability that n of them are women and m of them are men? Well, this can be thought of because the, when they come in, they're independent of each other. Their sex is independent of each other. That um, this can be thought of as a binomial random variable. That's what I'm going to write up in just a second. Where you can think of a woman coming into the shop is as a success. And uh, so this is going to be a binomial with parameters of number of trials as n plus m and the probability of success being a female coming into the shop being p. So... I'm going to write that up. Okay. No. For probability of n sub 1 is equal to n, and n sub 2 is equal to m, given n is equal to n plus m, where each person uh, who comes in is independently a woman with probability P. is a binomial random variable with, as I said, n plus n trials and p equal to the probability of success which we're going to think of as being a woman, so probability of a woman, which equals the probability of success. Okay. So now we're getting close to being able to conclude the problem. So, the probability that n sub 1 equals to m and n sub 2 equals to m is equal to, remember, it's probability that, oh, let's get that one. Probability that n sub 1 equals to m, n sub 2 equals to m, given n is equal to n plus m times is e to the minus lambda. Lambda to the n plus m over n plus m factorial. All right. Now, this we said was a binomial. Uh, we think of it like a binomial random variable. So here, uh, what our answer is for this, it's n plus m, so it's the PMF. 
If I don't have n plus m, choose n. <clears throat> Here, this is uh, p to the n, 1 minus p to the n plus m minus n, so that's just the m, and then times this. g e to the minus lambda, lambda to the n plus m over, this should have been back four, n plus m back four. Okay, we can simplify this now. So uh, this is, I guess I got room. This is n plus m factorial over n factorial, and here this will be m factorial. Uh, this is, uh, you can combine here, well, I guess I'll leave it as it is. This is p to the n, 1 minus p to the m. Here we have e to the minus lambda. Here I'll write this as lambda to the n, lambda to the m, and then times 1 over n plus m factorial. Of course, the n plus m factorials are going to cancel. So let me rewrite this. This is equal to 1 over n factorial, I'd say uh, lambda p okay. raised to the uh, so let me see, lambda, raised to the n, and then I'm going to rewrite this as e to the minus lambda p. Okay, remember, it's just supposed to be e to the minus lambda. That's what I'm writing. And then I'm going to have 1 over m factorial. I'm going to have uh, 1 minus p times lambda raised to the m. And then I'm going to have e to the minus lambda times 1 minus p. Okay. So when you combine these e to the minus lambda p and e to the minus lambda times 1 minus p, that, just, that does yield e to the minus uh, lambda which is what we have, so I'll rewrite it that way, okay? And so this is the answer, okay? And so some, this is the answer. That's the form of the answer. All right, now, some observations. So here's something to notice. Note the probability n to 1 equals n. Just the chance that you get n number of women based on what we have. That will be the sum as m runs from 0 to infinity of p so n sub 1 equal to n, n sub 2 uh, equal to m, so that's the joint um, probability, density, bone probability, mass length, whatever it is. But really we know it's probability mass, because look at our answer. Uh, the m's and n's are, dis are uh, natural numbers. That's what we have. Now that's equal to uh, the sum as m runs from 0 to infinity. We just found that joint PML. It's 1 over n factorial. That answer. Uh, lambda p to the n, e to the minus lambda p, 1 over m factorial. Uh, times 1 minus p times lambda 
to the m times e to the minus lambda times 1 minus p. Now, lots of these things do not depend on m. So this is the same thing, 1 over n factorial, lambda to the p, to the m, e to the minus lambda to the p, sum, as m runs from 0 to infinity, of 1 over m factorial, 1 minus p to the lambda, I'm sorry, times lambda raised to the m, e to the minus lambda times 1 minus p. So when we look at this sum, here, here's what we notice. Uh, this right here is nothing more than a, a Poisson random variable. This is the PMF That's what this is, all of this. It's the PMF of a Poisson random variable So when you sum that up, you're going to get 1 over all values you can get. And so that's equal to 1 over, so here's what we have. So the probability of n sub 1 equaling n is equal to if you will, uh, e to the minus lambda p, lambda p to the n over n factorial. Okay. So n sub 1 is a Poisson distributed random variable. It's a Poisson random variable. With parameters, or parameter, lambda times p. Similarly, n sub 2 is a Poisson random variable. with a parameter uh, p times, I'm sorry, it was lambda times 1 minus p. Okay. So we can see then, this is the last comment I'll make, As expected. Thus, M one and M two are independent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough for today. Thank you very much for your time and patience.